the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. And um, the first reading uh, from the book of Deuteronomy tells us about the feast of the first fruits. And during this feast, the first fruits were offered back to God in thanksgiving. And it kind of anticipates what we do every time during the Eucharist. And it kind of like shows who God is, but also who we are. And in fact, it's a remembrance of how God saved the people in Israel, of Israel from Egypt, from the slavery in Egypt. And particularly, it is specified who we are. We're wandering, we are aliens, and many times oppressed. And God, God saves us from all that. And there's so many people in so many situations, and even ourselves, that we find ourselves wandering with no direction. We don't know what we really want. And sometimes we also find ourselves aliens, or alienated, marginalized. Let's think of so many refugees. This is the story of so many people who suffer, finding their new place, a new future something to give hope to their children. And many times they're oppressed. We are oppressed by so many situations that sometimes we don't even realize. And uh, this profession of faith about who, not so much who God is, but what he does for us, we do it every time during the Eucharist. It's the memorial of what God does for us. He lays his, down, lays his life down for us, is risen from the dead, and continues to feed us. And what Lent is really about is not so much us doing something for God, but it's actually fasting, praying, and doing almsgiving in order to really recognize and give thanksgiving to God for what he does for us. It's a continual memorial of his works. And in fact, our founder too, St. Paul of the Cross, insisted on really teaching the people the memory of the passion of Jesus to really understand what God does for us, and then you're able to understand why you should fast, why you should pray, and why you should be generous towards others. And the three temptations in the gospel that we all go through are the temptations of always trying to find an immediate easy solution to, for example, financial situations. We all have thirst of power. And we always look for something spectacular. We all want to be somehow be famous or recognized. We're always looking how many likes we have on our social media pages. And uh, we always look that to be like popular. And the way of Jesus instead is different. And uh, especially the first temptation when the devil says after 40 days that he's been starving, not eating Jesus, he says, you know, why don't you just tell these stones to become bread. He's hungry. Well, Jesus answers back that not only of bread, but of every word that comes, out, that comes out of the mouth of God, that will really satisfy us. And I think that so many times we forget that it's not just enough to serve the poor, to do almsgiving, to give money or in the shelter. So many times we forget that these brothers and sisters are people, are persons, they have a dignity. And sometimes they need friendship. They need someone who will stop and talk to them. And just a few weeks ago, I was in Grand Central Station, and I offered to a man a sandwich and some soup. And he refused it at the beginning. Actually, he's kind of looking at me kind of suspicious, wondering what I was looking for. And um, I stayed there, I insisted, then I just stayed quiet, and I you know, continued to ask him questions, who he was, where he came from, and he never really warmed up to me. And only when I decided to leave and saying, you know, I really wish you peace, he stopped me, and he says, I really appreciate what you're doing. And he says, I appreciate the fact not that you're giving me a sandwich or some soup, but I appreciate the fact that you made me realize today that I'm not invisible. You made me realize that I'm a person because so many people pass into the station every day 
and no one notices me. And then he warmed up and he told me his own story. His own story of wandering, of being oppressed, and being alienated. And I realized then that probably we should open more our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to really find where God is and to hear and listen his story. So during this Lent, let us fast from the things that probably like oppress us so that our, our hearts will be open and recognize God and what he does every day for us.